the number one slot at the US box office. Here he is, he's the very funny Mr. Kevin Hart. <laughs> these couches weren't too tall. No. no. <laughs> I didn't want my feet to be swinging. So well, I was like, right. well let, let, me, let me get with the, get that out of the way then because you're not the tallest guest we have on the show this well, evening. Obviously. No, I, I mean, look, I call it petite. I'm a petite individual. Yeah. But I'm confident. Yeah, yeah. I'm very confident. You hear my voice? That makes up for my size. Yeah. I'm very confident. <laughs> uh, do you think, uh, do, do people, uh, I don't know quite how to put this, but... Uh, <laughs> I like a small man. Okay. <laughs> All right. Does that make sense to you? No, it doesn't. Well, no, I, no, no. Some of my friends are small guys, and I, they, I, they kind of bring a different kind of energy yeah. into any gathering, I've noticed. We're good people. I mean, I think that's the best way. Wait, first of all, why are we talking like, <laughs> like small people are a different type of people? Right? <laughs> but I notice you're not, oh, I mean, because you're a fit guy, clearly. Very and I know fit. You're in the... <laughs> Very fit. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get that well, you, you, Very fit. Well, in Hollywood, you have to be. You have to be, don't you? You, you don't have to be. Yeah. I consider myself very fit. Okay. I'm what you call a sex symbol. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, you mean, so you're what you call a sex symbol, but with the inverted yeah. commas? <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had to do that just in case somebody wanted to question it. Oh, I did this. Okay. okay. I, I, I gave you this. I love your stand-up comedy. I Thank love your you. movies as well. We'll talk about your new movie and movie career, but uh, you came over in 2012 and you sold out the O2. Yes, I did. London. Yes, I you did. You sold out Wembley in 2014. Yes, I did. Uh, and I noticed that, in common with some other stand-up comedians, you talk a lot about your, your personal life, about growing up, yes. about your family now. Uh, and in particular, I was wondering, you know, the... Uh, the childhood you had mm -hmm. struck me as being a difficult childhood, as yeah. a, a tough childhood. Not, you know what, not difficult to the point where I didn't have. It's, it's, I, what my surroundings were is what I was used to. You know, that's all I knew. So, uh, I think growing up, my mom, uh, I was raised by a single mother. Dad was on drugs, in and out of jail, not around too much. But my mom made sure that me and my brother had. What, my, was, your dad, what was the drugs your dad had the problem with? Uh, name one. He did them all. Yeah, well, uh, you were, angry about uh, it. were you angry with him? No, man, I don't care. I'm black. We don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> You just care. You showed your shoulders. I don't... It's not something that I cry. <laughs> what was Dad doing? No. My dad's fine now. When I got to a point where I could afford to do it, I got my dad help, put him in an uh, institution where, you know, it was 24-hour care, and now my dad's sober. And That's now my dad... Basically, here's how I see it. My dad was supposed to do drugs so I could see what not to do. Does that make sense? Well, I can see where you're going with that. So you had a kind of very negative example put right in front I of you. A, I had a point-blank view yeah, of yeah. what drugs can do to an individual. Yeah. You're a father yourself now, because you've got two children? I am, two kids. Well, me. let me ask you this thing, because you do swear a lot on stage. I, I do. I but fine. I get away with it. It's like yeah. a, my voice is small oh, enough yeah. to where it's not offensive. Yeah, well... <laughs> Uh, I've used that excuse as well. It doesn't always work. No, because you're tall. <laughs> you can't do the same thing. Is that what it is? Watch this. Come on, man. Stop being a bitch. Okay, Look at yeah. that. See that? Small. Okay. Come on, don't be a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Now, if I say, like, you don't be a bitch. Whoa, what? hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that? Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's different. A, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although, who's going to be scared of this? Uh, but I know, but your mum, and I don't know how much it's true, I get the feeling she was pretty down on you swearing. Yes, you yes. My mom is very much into church, very religious. And, you know, my mom never came to see me perform. My mom has never, she passed away uh, six, six and a half years ago. My mom has never seen me perform. And the reason why my mom never wanted to come to a show is because of the swearing, of the alcohol, of smoking here. She just didn't so want to be around. the whole environment, not just your performance. Just the environment. Whole, yeah, yeah. It had nothing to do with just me, just the environment yeah, yeah. in general. Real old school church she felt, going, yeah. yeah, it wasn't conducive to what she wanted to be around. When you were a kid, though, did she ever let you swear? Were there times when you were allowed no. to use the curse word? No, my mom was so strict. So strict. Yeah, yeah. So strict. My mom, my mom beat me one time. My mom was the mom that whatever was near her is what she beat me with. <laughs> like, I got beat with a lamp shade. It didn't even hurt. It didn't even hurt. And the fact that she felt that that, that that was a weapon at the time, like she grabbed my arm until she found something and <laughs> grabbed the lampshade. I just remember looking at her like, this don't hurt, but you're messing up the lampshade. I got <laughs> She was weak. My mom was not strong. None of the whoopings hurt. So I just had to act like it hurt. Uh, uh, uh. 
<laughs> Stop, please don't. Oh, you're hurting me. This isn't good. <laughs> I bet she knew you if I could. She didn't really want to hurt you. That's no, what's she going on. She needs to get there. out of breath. Yeah. You are going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, oh, Kevin has a new movie out. It's The Wedding Ringer, and it comes on the 20th of February. Yes, sir. Okay, and now this is, this is uh, got a great concept, a great premise behind this. Explain to us the story, because I can see what attracted you. Uh, what, what's the deal with The Wedding this, Ringer? This movie is, uh, this is my first rated R comedy. It's a movie about a guy, uh, Josh Gad, who plays a character named Doug. Doug has basically lied himself into a corner. Uh, Doug is getting married, and he's told his wife that he has a best man, and he also has groomsmen. He's a couple days away from the wedding, and his wife is pressuring him to get these people to come to the meetings. Yeah. With his back against the wall, he doesn't know what else to do, because these people don't exist. He's forced to come to a guy like myself. I play a guy named Jimmy Callahan. I provide a business for those who lack friends. Uh, whatever you need, I can provide it for the right price. He needs a best man, no problem, I can do it. He also needs seven groomsmen. Yeah. This movie is about the road to friendship between these two guys it's and a, trying to create bromance. this. It's a bromance. Yeah. And trying to create this lie. But the fun and silliness and the edgy humor that we really take on in this movie along <laughs> the way is unbelievable. I think this is my best work to date. Well, it takes some chances, for sure. There's a few scenes you think, wow, I'm amazed they got away with that. Yo. I'm thinking of the scene with the dog. Oh, yeah, no, there's a, there's a scene with the dog. There's a scene with the dog where, uh, without giving up the movie, I can... Uh, how do we talk about this thing? Well, I, I can talk about it without saying too much. Uh, there's a bachelor party that I throw for uh, Doug. And uh, Doug, we want to do something wild for him because he's a guy, he's approved, hasn't done much. So we have a dog and we decide to blindfold Doug and put peanut butter on Doug's area, okay? And we say, okay, we're gonna give you a gift, and we tie him up, and we get the dog to come in and start licking the peanut butter off his area, and he thinks it's a girl, and we unfold it, and he sees that it's a dog. The dog then panics, bites down on the area. <laughs> It becomes a crazy situation because now we got to get it I don't see how that could become a crazy situation. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, what was crazy was on the day, the dog didn't want to walk to the, the, the area where, where he had to do the business. So... Oh, he didn't was, really do the business. There was, no, it was, it was a prosthetic. Oh. But there was a guy whose job was to, like, hold the prosthetic and get the dog. So, like, in between takes, you see this guy, like, come on, man, he's got, like, he's got the thing, like, near his forehead, talking to the dog, and everybody's just looking, like, this can't be good, like, Did you? if the dog had a voice, the dog was like, I swear, this is the last time that I'm taking, that I'm taking any gigs like this, I'm, no more gigs like this, I told my agent. Very okay, well, that's still in the movie, but not, uh, quite like that. Um, okay, this is The uh, Wedding Ringer, and it's out the 20th of February, look at this. The wedding ring. Um, so the speeches. Have you been? I imagine you would be a dream person to be best man, Stephen. Well, yeah, I was um, best man for my colleague Hugh Laurie and uh, for my brother. That was that was bad because um, I had an asthma attack. Um, <laughs> and that's not the ideal place to be, is it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but. As um, many asthmatics will know, one of the things if you do get serious asthma that you're encouraged to do is have an adrenaline uh, syringe uh, about your, you know, in your car glove compartment or somewhere similar, and just, because it's intramuscular, you just give yourself a stab. And, of course, the fear of having to make a speech is a great surge of adrenaline. So I, I did get through it, but it was, it was, there was a time when I, I was just <laughs> outside the tent thinking... I was sinking to the ground, wheezing, unable to breathe, thinking, how do I get, this, get my words of love out to my brother? If you're the bride, you are pissed <laughs> on my day. <laughs> He's going to almost die on my day. You know the best man to stop the speech and get at a syringe out and inject oh. himself. <laughs> Uh, Kevin, I'm so thrilled you came on the show. I'm oh, genuinely I'm a big happy, fan. Man. Even bigger fan now you've been on. Kevin, you're going to stay with us? Yes, I'll stay. Kevin man. Hart, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to stay with us. Still to come after this break, we have the Oscar nominated Felicity Jones and Ashley.